Congratulations on your new Scorpion X2 e-bike purchase. Assembling your new bike is fairly simple and should take less than 30 minutes. Start by checking the outer box to ensure there isn't any shipping damage. Open the bottom of the bike box. Then, set the box upright, being sure the flaps are out of the way. Slide the box off of the bike. Lay the foam packaging down with the front wheel facing up. Using scissors, carefully remove the front wheel. Next, open the foam packaging and remove the parts accessory box. The parts accessory box will include the front skewer, one tri Allen wrench, a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, three wrenches, a front fork mounted reflector, a right and left pedal, and the battery charger. You will also need scissors or flat side cutters and Phillips head screwdriver to complete your bike assembly and a bike pump to add air to the tires if needed. Carefully lift the bike out of the foam, holding onto the rear rack and the front fork. Place the bike on the ground, resting it on the fork saver and rear wheel. Carefully check the bike for any shipping damage. Remove the packaging material from around the bike. And remove the front fender zip-tied to the rear fender. Locate the front wheel and remove the plastic caps from both sides of the axle. Now, find the front skewer in the accessory box and remove the nut and spring. Insert the skewer on the drive side of the front wheel. Be sure the curved portion of the cam lock is touching the lever and that the spring's smaller side is facing in. Without touching the brake rotor, place the spring on the other side of the wheel, being sure the skinny side is facing in. Then place the nut on the skewer and lightly tighten by hand. Before installing the wheel, be sure to check that all components of the quick release are installed and oriented in the correct way. Then, remove the fork saver by hand. Cut the zip tie around the brake pad spacer. Then, remove the spacer from the front brake pads. Slide the wheel into the dropouts, making sure the rotor sides in between the brake pads and the skewer goes into the dropouts fully. Start adjusting the tension of the quick release by turning the nut. The motion of the lever should have some resistance when it's about halfway closed. If the lever moves too easily, tighten the adjusting nut and try again. Fully tighten the wheel in place by closing the lever into the proper position. It is important that the cam lock is not touching the fork. It must be angled to the front of the fork when locked into place. If the top of the lever is touching the fork, the cam lock is not fully closed and the wheel is not properly installed. Be sure to check that the lever and nut are not loose at all. Once the wheel is fully installed, put the kickstand down. Before every ride, it's critical to check that the front wheel is fully tightened and secure. Failure to check the front wheel could result in significant injury to the rider.
To install the handlebars, locate the Tri-Tool in the Parts Accessory box. Use the 4mm Allen side to loosen the stem bolts from the faceplate. Remove the front plate and bolts. Position the handlebars upright so the brake levers face forward and the LCD screen is on the left side. Be sure to center the handlebars over the fork. Place the faceplate and bolts on the front of the handlebar and begin to lightly tighten by hand. Maneuver the handlebars until they're in the optimal position for you. Then, use the 4mm side of the tri-tool to completely tighten the bolts evenly. Make sure the gap between the faceplate and stem is evenly spaced. Once the handlebars are installed, it's important to check that the brake levers are fully tightened. Use the 4mm side of the tri-tool to loosen the bolt on the brake lever slightly until you're able to maneuver it to the optimal position. Then, fully tighten the bolt. Loosen the bolt on the other brake lever and move it to the optimal position. Then tighten it fully. To install the front fender, locate the front fork mounted reflector, long bolt, nut and two washers, tri-tool, 10 mm wrench. Next, find the fender and make sure the bracket is at the front. Remove bracket cover if present. Then slide it over the wheel. Find the long bolt, washer and fork mounted reflector. Then place the bolt through the washer, then through the reflector mount and then through the fender bracket. Now put the bolt through the fork arch. Put the washer and nut on the back of the bolt and lightly tighten by hand. Using the 5mm side of the tri-tool and 10mm wrench, tighten the bolt and nut down while making sure the reflector mounting bracket is level. Remove the fender stay bolts and washers from the fork with the 4mm side of the tri-tool. Align one of the fender stays with the mounting hole on the fork. Insert the washer and bolt through it and tighten the bolt using the 4mm side of the tri-tool. Next, align the other fender stay with the fork and repeat the same steps. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, loosen the bolt that mounts the front reflector on the reflector bracket and move the reflector so it faces forward, then tighten the bolt. Adjust the headlight so it faces forward and slightly down. Then tighten the headlight mounting bolts with the 6mm side of the tri-tool until they are snug but not too tight. To install the pedals, locate both the right and left pedals in the parts accessory box and find the 15mm wrench. The left pedal will have the letter L on it and the right pedal will have R. Make sure you use the correct pedal on the correct side. They are not interchangeable. Insert the right pedal on the rider's right side of the bike and turn it clockwise until it's snug. On the rider's left side of the bike, insert the left pedal and tighten it counterclockwise. At this point, the pedals are not fully installed. Use the 15mm wrench to fully tighten each pedal. It's critical that the pedals are tightened firmly in the crank arm to prevent the pedals from loosening while riding, which will result in significant damage to the bike. Now, you can carefully clip the keys, being careful not to cut any of the cables. Before heading out, be sure to check the tire pressure and add air to the tires if needed. 
Next, double check that all parts and bolts are secure on the bike. Then turn the battery on by inserting your key and removing the top portion of the battery. Click the power button. Then turn the key and push the top of the battery into place. Be sure to check that the battery is fully locked into the frame. Then turn the LCD on by holding the power button on the back of the display for about three seconds. You're all set to ride faster and farther on your new Scorpion X2 e-bike from Juiced.